Yeah. This is a Gary mango tree and the bloom has set a few small fruits but we see some evidence of powdery mildew starting here and also these black spots are anthracnose. So it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and spray copper here because there is enough fruit set on most of these panicles. The copper will help a little bit against powdery mildew, but it's not considered super effective. It is very effective against the anthracnose spreading more. Of course, it will never fix that spot that's already dead. I should mention that another reason for spraying early in the day is that we don't want to spray pollinating insects. Even if it's just water, we're going to bother them at the very least. So uh, since they come out when it warms up, when it starts to get sunny, if we get the spraying done before then, then we usually won't be bothering the pollinators. These are Julie flowers and I don't see any baby fruit here yet. So I for sure would not want to spray with copper at this stage. Here's well the honeybee just came by momentarily. Here, here we go. So this has lots of young fruit on it, a great plenty I'd say. It also has open flowers, but there's so many young fruit on here that you might go ahead and spray something like this with copper uh, to protect it because you don't need any more fruit set than what you have. Most of these will have to fall off as it is because there's no way that the tree can make great big kit mangoes, you know, a hundred of them on one little branch. Uh, notice the flies. Can you, you see the flies here? I probably shooed them off, but uh, they're pollinating the flowers. This is a Nam Doc Mai tree. It flowered quite a bit earlier than a lot of the other trees around and you can see some quite large fruit set here. So I wish I had gotten this sprayed already with copper, but I haven't. Does it look healthy so far though? Yes, it does look healthy so far. And Nam Doc Mai is usually pretty resistant to anthracnose. This is a Madame Francis, which was one of the three trees in the grove that flowered way before the others, and we were not spraying. And these panicles got totally destroyed by both powdery mildew and uh, anthracnose. There is some more recent bloom that might set some fruit. Does not look like a good crop this year. This tree produced a lot of beautiful bloom, but we didn't spray it and the weather wasn't particularly, particularly good for the bloom. And you can see there's almost no crop on this side of the tree. There are a few later blooms that are setting some fruit. This Phoenix mango has some beautiful, fully open, fresh bloom right now very aromatic as mangoes go with their kind of stinky aroma uh, which attracts the flies. The flies are the main pollinators of mangoes. Bees come fortunately as well but flies are the most important of all. 
we for sure would not want to spray copper on these blooms at this stage. And that is because if you spray copper and fully open flowers, you will be killing the pollen, sterilizing the pollen. Then you don't get any fruit. This is a Popucalai, popularly called lemon meringue. This is an example of a very nice amount of fruit set, even though we didn't spray. That's often the case with the lemon ring, that it sets a better crop under conditions that other varieties don't. This is a glen. It also has a pretty good amount of fruit set. Well, it's supposed to get down to 48 next week. So I guess after that, we'll see the next batch of blooms. Pineapple pleasure is one of the more wonderful mangoes to eat. But when you have a tree, you're usually disappointed with how few, if any, fruits it produces. And that seems to be a problem that occurs at flowering stage because it does flower plenty. Uh, this does have a few fruit sets on it, so maybe it'll be better than the last couple of years where there's been almost nothing. Two or three fruit to remind us how good they are. Here's an example of a flower you could probably go ahead and spray with copper if most of your trees were covered with flowers at this stage. Yes, there are a few open flowers that you'll kill the pollen in, but the others are all closed. They won't be harmed. So we're standing in front of a gorgeous Julie tree, just full of beautiful bloom. And this is a gorgeous Neelum tree, but no bloom at all. So in your particular situation, you might have flowers or not flowers. I'm still hopeful. Uh, that Neelum will have a good uh, bloom this year. It's just going to be later, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, no matter what stage your flowers are in, I hope that you were able to gain some uh, usable knowledge from Har's experience with spraying mango bloom and young fruit. Uh, there's, you know, all sorts of things that you mentioned as far as chemicals and timing and everything, but Har, do you want to give a you know, parting last words. So this is a good example of a tree that you can use a stronger mix on because it has no bloom and it has no visible problem at present. So now is the perfect time to put on a preventive spray so that it doesn't have as much chance for a problem later. Get these leaves covered backside and top side with a copper spray one time and a sulfur spray another time before the bloom even starts. I just thought of one thing that uh, we didn't really specifically mention and powdery mildew is usually only a problem during certain months of the year. Uh, so uh, in general, I know the weather's different every year, but uh, 
in Florida and South Florida, uh, what month are you usually um, clear of powdery mildew risk? Well, once the days and nights are in the, the mid-70s or higher, then powdery mildew is unlikely to, to proliferate. It'll still be present. It'll be there surviving until it's kind of weather next season. But you need to worry once the night temperatures get into the low 70s with high humidity but no rain. That's when the powdery mildew really starts to grow, especially when the weather gets down into the 60s or even the upper 50s. That's all powdery mildew growing range. So, and then anthracnose is the other main um, disease, a fungal disease, uh, of, you know, that affects the, the flowers and the fruit and the tree also. Uh, and anthracnose uh, is associated strongly with the, the humidity. And usually with warmth as well. I don't know what the bottom end of the range is. But when you have weather in the 70s or warmer at night and during the day too, then the anthracnose will be able to do just fine until the weather gets up into the 90s and then most fungi will not grow. It's too hot for them. So anyway, anthracnose is around for most of the year uh, or can affect the trees for most of the year. It's always around, but uh, latent. And, uh, but right now is a good time to spray. Uh, if you have no bloom, it's still a good time to spray. If you do have, uh, have some bloom or small fruit, uh, you spray with sulfur or copper, depending on your situation. At a weaker concentration. That's important, so you don't hurt the flowers. Okay, well, thanks very much, Har. Appreciate all your knowledge. And uh, good luck with all of your mangoes out there. Hopefully everybody has a great crop in 2020.